All right, here we go. Oh my gosh. 200 miles an hour. You're not going to believe what I can see through this window. In fact, you're going to have a hard time believing this story at all. I certainly did to start with. In this chamber is a new way to launch satellites into orbit. Oh my gosh, it's becoming a blur. 400 miles an hour. And it's just that far away from us. Yes. <laughs> and can you just one more time go over what it is you're planning to do? <laughs> because it's like, I still can't believe it. So Spin Launch is capable of literally throwing satellites into space. <laughs> we'll, cut, we'll cut the laughing. Yep, you heard it right. David and I are currently looking at a live video feed of a prototype spin launcher in New Mexico. When the full-size one is built, it will take a small satellite, stick it inside a giant dart, load it onto a 100 meter long arm, gradually spin it round and round, faster and faster, and then let it go at 5,000 miles an hour. Don't believe me? I don't blame you. This idea sounds completely nuts. Well, you know what's nuts is rockets. Rockets are combustion chambers that burn cryogenic propellants at temperatures that are greater than like the surface of the sun. They have thousands of components that are made out of the most exotic materials known to man, and they're on the verge of blowing apart at any possible minute. I, I, think, uh, I think Spin Launch is quite a bit less nuts than a rocket. And look, as the day's gone on, I've started to believe it. By getting the projectile above the atmosphere, you've done away with the need for most of your fuel and most of your weight. Without air resistance, a much smaller rocket can then get the satellite up to 17,000 miles an hour and into orbit. Spin launch gets you most of the way there, and then there's a small rocket that gets you all the way there. Right, okay. And when the first full test happens in 2025, this is what will be fired into orbit. The vehicle is passively stable, so you can see it has a heavy tip in the front, fins in the back. That provides passive stability that stabilizes it like a dart. So if it comes out a little bit sideways, it automatically stabilizes. How many Gs is this thing pulling as it goes around? So the system pulls 10,000 Gs at peak speed. You can't put people in this, can you? You cannot put people. I mean, you can put people in, but you won't get people out. 10,000 G. That sounds like anything that you put into the accelerator is just going to be squashed flat, but to prove it works, these guys put an iPhone 4 into the accelerator and got it up to 12 and a half thousand G. It still works. Oh. Hmm. The company says it's eventually planning for up to five launches a day and it will cost about half a million dollars per launch compared to seven million for a rocket launch. Before then, testing is ongoing using the 33 meter arm in New Mexico and a 12 meter arm here in Long Beach, California. And I've been invited to witness a test launch firsthand. Now the 12 meter accelerator won't be launching into the air. This much smaller projectile will be fired down a tube and straight into a steel plate. What happens to this after it's launched from that? So this mostly turns to dust as it hits the end of the tunnel. Oh my gosh. Now, where were we? Oh yeah. 500 miles an hour. So now you're going about as fast as a jet. The actual projectiles and the spinning arm are made of carbon fiber, pretty much the only substance that can withstand the forces involved. 700 miles an hour. And in order to spin up to nearly 1,000 miles an hour today, this entire chamber needs to be a near vacuum. And that's why we can hardly hear anything. System is supersonic. If this were full of air, we'd get a sonic boom on every single revolution. You can that's hear a little bit. Can you hear it? Yeah. Just a little bit. A little bit of vibration too. Arming system. Here we go. So he's doing the launch Launching sequence now. 10. Nine. Here we go. Seven, six, five, four, eight, two, one, 
Wow. In my mind, <clears throat> this has gone from nonsense to plausible in the space of a few hours. And in October last year, the first test launch in New Mexico proved that the carbon fiber dart could not only launch, but also survive a landing in which it buried itself in the desert. I have been blown away by a launch technology that doesn't blow things away. In fact, by throwing things away, there's less to throw away. I mean, we just watched something launch. There was no great big fireball or smoke. It's clean, it's clean, it's very clean. I mean, at some point, that was going supersonic straight towards us. And yes. then it yeah. went round, multiple, and then it came towards times, us again. Multiple times per second. Oh, wow. Yeah. Multiple times per second. Thank you for letting go at the right points. Yeah. It's, all, it's all in the timing, you have to, <laughs> you know.